So about three weeks ago, I ran the very first playtest for my minigame server. And as you might expect, it went pretty terribly. Servers crashed, things broke. It was just a general nightmare. As anyone who was there can tell you, there was more sitting around waiting for things to be fixed than there was actual playtesting. So overall, about as well as you would expect a first playtest to go. Now from this, I was able to gather some data and fix a few bugs, but one critical oversight on my part almost made the entire thing useless. Welcome back to the devlog, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about how my lack of a central logging system almost ruined my playtest. For those who don't know, logging is a way to track and record everything that happens while a piece of software is running. For this case, logging is required to understand the inner workings of the servers and plugins running the network. Logging is not as exciting as other systems, as it's never really shown to the end user. However, it's still extremely important, because without it, you end up having no insight into your software while it's running. Now, in the case of most Minecraft servers, the default logging option works just fine. It just takes all of the logs, puts them into a file, and you can read them whenever you want. There's timestamps. It's all good works pretty well for most servers. However, in my case, I'm running a network, so there are many different servers across multiple Kubernetes pods. So not only are all the logs in different places, but the log files themselves are ephemeral. This means that just logging everything into a file won't work, because not only are there too many servers to get logs from, but log files are also destroyed when the pods shut down. So to tackle this problem, we're going to need a more professional solution. In short, we need a central logging system, or a log aggregator. What a central logger does is it takes all the logs from all the different places in real time and puts them in one place. Place. It also handles many other things like organization, error reporting and alerts, and other general features that you might want when dealing with a large quantity of log data. Now there's a few enterprise solutions such as Splunk, but for my use case it's a bit too over the top. I need a solution that I can self-host and is preferably open source. This is where Graylog comes in. I was able to find a few different options for logging solutions that match my criteria, but overall the one I decided to go with was Graylog. Graylog is good because not only does it allow you to self-host, but it also has an enterprise version. This means if I ever start needing logging at a higher scale, I won't have to change my entire underlying logging system. Graylog also allows the use of message brokers like RabbitMQ to deliver logs, meaning I can just use my current system with RabbitMQ for logging as well. So now that I have software to handle log data, and a way to send the logs, I need a way to actually collect them. Because Graylog allows us to use RabbitMQ, all I have to do is write a small plugin that captures logs from the console and sends them via RabbitMQ to Graylog. And just like that, we now have a full central logging system. Now right now, it only logs messages on the servers, it doesn't log anything from Kubernetes or the pods themselves, but in future this could be easily expanded, because all we have to do is pipe more data into Graylog through RabbitMQ and it will automatically organize it, categorize it, and make sure that everything is properly sorted. This is also super useful for live DevOps as well, because I can easily find errors and debug issues while the servers are running, because I know exactly when and where errors are happening. Graylog also allows me to set alerts, so that if something is going wrong more than usual, or if there are many errors going from a certain part of code, it will ping me and let me know so I can fix that. So now that I have a logging system in place, running playtests will be far more useful, because I'll have proper insight into what went wrong, rather than just guessing in the dark at what happened. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments. Seeing as you've made it this far in the video, I think it's safe to assume that you might enjoy the rest of the series. So I recommend starting out on this episode here. Thank you very much for watching.